Hi, Leo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 1st to the 15th, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Leo, January 1st to the 15th, 2022. Leo, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels, oh goodness. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the devil at our root, which is also Capricorn energy. We're in Capricorn season, so that can very well make sense. But we also have, if we have Capricorn in our natal chart, this is going to come up very powerfully here at the root of our personality. And we have the sun. We're also freeing ourselves from a lot of demons that have held us back, which is really quite extraordinary. We then have the four of swords, rest, relaxation, and also honoring of our story and ourselves. The eight of cups, walking away from what we once thought we would love. We have the lovers, we have the nine of cups, and we have the five of pentacles in our emotional selves. So the lovers is Gemini energy. If we have Gemini within our natal chart, this is going to come through very powerfully in our emotional self. Like the way that we come forward, we need love, we need connection. We also need to like feel and talk. We're going to be very sensitive around communication and around the way that we're looking at things, the way that we're taking things in, the way that we're understanding the world around us. We then have the Three of Wands and the Nine of Cups in the public arena. There's a way that we're moving forward and we're really moving towards a wish, towards something that we deeply desire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. There we go. And show me clearly. So right here, justice, which is Libra energy. Now, it can be that we quite literally need to be mindful of Libras, but we also need to be mindful of the way justice is, is being served, the way that we per are perceiving justice, but also the way that we're looking at things and saying everything has to be just, everything has to be fair, everything has to be just like this, or somebody is saying, you know, it has to be like this. We have to step back and say, okay, what discerning energy do I need to be able to move forward in? Meaning what is correct for me at this time? What is it that I need to look at? What is it that I need to gain an understanding of? Where is it that I'm out of balance? And where is it that I need to cut away a lot of doubts and fears that that I carry. And it's not looking 
at the way other people judge us. It's looking at what we really desire for our hearts and our souls and ourselves. And it moves us to this place where, yes, we need to be mindful of justice. We need to be mindful of people saying, okay, this is a certain way that it has to be. And we also need to be mindful of of energy that just isn't going to help heal us, isn't going to help move us forward, but we're going to think, oh, but that's the way that it needs to be. That's the way that justice will come forward. So I know that sounds a bit confusing, but that's what spirit is saying right here at this time. Let's look at our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So we have two right here. We have the crown chakra and we have the root chakra. So the crown chakra comes in and says meditation. This is a connection between the heart and the mind. And that's going to be so important because we also need balance, the balance of sacred feminine energy and sacred masculine energy, the balance of the outside world and the inside world, the balance of what we want and where we are, you know, everything like that. Things need to be balanced. And that's also going to be part of the justice scene that the justice theme that we're seeing here is that we need to be just, we need to be kind, we need to be, you know, in balance with ourselves and with the way that we're progressing forward, what it is that we truly desire. Okay. So let's talk about this time astrologically speaking. So we start off with the 1st of January and we have two astrological events happening on the 1st of January. We start off with the Sun trine Uranus. Now the Sun trine Uranus comes forward. We have strong Sun energy here because first of all, we're Leos. We're ruled by the Sun. So we have our ruling, you know, celestial body coming forward with the Sun here. So this is going to be very powerful. We can actually see this overriding the next planet orientation, well, Mercury trying the North Lunar Nod. So we have here the Sun trying Uranus, and this is a wonderful way to start the new year. This is a time when we are comfortable to stand in our essence, to say what it is that we want, to really embrace who it is that we are. We're going to have a little bit of a problem, you know, no, we're not going to have a problem at all, actually, embracing you know, what we desire, our individuality, and letting ourselves stand out, letting ourselves shine. We're actually going to have a bit of a problem conforming in ways that don't suit us and maybe even holding our tongues sometimes. So that could be a bit difficult for us, Leo. We're going to want to shine. We're going to kind of want to roar at people like lions roar at people who don't understand, who aren't seeing things the same way. So just be mindful of this. We will also be in tune with the world around us and be getting insights through our dreams and really seeing the way that we want to move forward, the way that we desire for ourselves, how we're changing, how we're evolving. The 1st of January also has as Mercury trying the North Lunar Nod. Now, this is another powerful and positive alignment. It is said that our life purpose is echoed between the North and the South Lunar Nodes. And the North and the South Lunar Nodes are also spoken of in astrology as the head and the tail of the dragon. So this is the body of our being. This is echoing the power of who we are and how we are evolving. This during this time, we will enjoy figuring out the whys and the how comes. It's, it's going to be like a mystery that we're, we're solving for ourselves, but also for others around us. And we will also not be taking things too seriously, which is really good for us, Leo. We can tend to take things too seriously. We can tend to take things as a personal attack when they're not really, or when people are just kibbutzing, kind of having a good time. So just be mindful of this. On the 2nd of January, we have the new moon and the new moon is in Capricorn. And there will be a separate video done on that. Also on on the 2nd of January, we have Mercury entering into Aquarius. Now, this is really good because Mercury really loves being in Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Mercury is all about communication, all about expression. Though, you know, Aquarius isn't ruled by Mercury, Mercury really does love being in Aquarius. And we see a lot of you know, positive outlooks coming our way, uh, seeing the things, seeing things as like the cup half full instead of the cup half empty a sort of outlook comes to us. This lasts pretty much up until the 14th of of January because that's when we have Mercury going retrograde. And as Mercury goes retrograde, things become a little bit more intense, but Mercury stays in Aquarius until the 25th of January. So there's more balanced energy coming forward. So that's really good. On the 5th of January, we have Venus sextile Neptune. Now with Venus sextile Neptune, 
Oh, and because I jumped ahead of myself, when we have Mercury here on the 1st of January with Mercury trying the North Lunar Nod, and on the 2nd of January with Mercury entering into Aquarius, we have the planetary element of Mercury right here with Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So this becomes more intense, and this becomes very powerful for us. Whenever Mercury comes up during this time, it's going to be more intense for us. Just like whenever the sun comes up, because that is our ruling celestial you know, object in the sky, it becomes more powerful powerful for us. So now let's get to the 5th of January. This is Venus sextile Neptune. Now this is a passionate day when we need to express our feelings. We're going to want to hold things in. Don't. Also, don't let your feelings just kind of like rage within you, kind of like just come out all at once, Leo. We have to be mindful of that because sometimes we're like, okay, I'm just going to say what I feel or express what I feel. It can come out a little bit powerfully for us and become this fire that we need to kind of contain or have a better understanding of. So just be mindful here. So with this expression of needing to express our feelings, we will be highly creative and also enjoy, enjoy surrounding ourselves with beauty, surrounding ourselves with things that we love and that bring us a contentment and a balance within our lives. We are also going to exude a charm that will make us very attractive. So take advantage of that. There is... There's time here and there needs to be time here for a little extra self-care, a little pampering will go a long way to enhancing our mood, to raising our energy vibration. On the 8th of January, we have the sun conjunct Venus. Again, whenever the sun comes up, that is very powerful for us. So this day is going to be amplified. So with the sun conjunct Venus, we have this personification of love and of peace. We need to surround ourselves with beauty and give ourselves permission to express our emotions, to really embrace what it is that we want. And for a lot of us Leos, we've kind of built a wall. We say, you know, this is what I need and this is what's practical and this is, you know, having your feet firmly planted on the ground and this is what I need to be able to move forward to the place that I want to be. And that's great to have that practical mindset, but this is going to be a time for us, astrologically speaking, from the 1st to the 15th, where the heart matters, where the expression of our emotions matter. This is a time when low energy vibrational people have a hugely negative effect on us. We have to be mindful of who we're surrounding ourselves with, even the places that we're surrounding ourselves with, because if it has low negative energy vibration, we're really going to feel that. On the 10th of January, Mercury is trying Chiron. Now again, Mercury is amplified because of the lovers here at our heart. This is a harmonious aspect and helps helps us to heal ourselves and others. This can be a day though where we get a little bit too intense on healing everything, just wanting everything to be right, everything to be harmonious, everything to be beautiful and peaceful and, and powerful. And it can be, it definitely can be that day, but we also need to balance ourselves. We need to see ourselves. We need to accept ourselves and what we want from our lives. And so this is going to be a game changer. We will have a talent for saying the right things at the right time. We also need to follow our own ideas and really embrace ancient wisdom on this day because it brings us a better understanding of the present. The 11th of January is the sun sextile Neptune, again amplified because we're ruled by the sun. This is a powerful creative time that should be utilized. Neptune makes us highly sensitive to our surroundings and we need to be mindful of who we're associating with and how, again, we're what we're surrounded with, how we're surrounding ourselves in our world, how our inner self is reflective in our outer appearance or outer world. There is also a lot of psychic potential on this day, which can overwhelm us if we're not ready for it. So be aware of this, be prepared for this, and don't let it take over, especially if we don't want it to. Now we have on the 11th of January also, we have Mars squared Neptune. Now this alignment brings profound profoundly varying energy. We have on the one hand, we have the positive energy of bravery and glamour, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like Hollywood, right? All that glitters isn't gold. And on this day, all that glitters isn't gold. And we have to remind ourselves of this because there is also going to be this this energy of scandal and intrigue that we can get pulled into. This is a day where we can get totally involved in gossiping, where we can, you know, dig deeper into things and kind of find out things about other people. Though we could want to go down that road, 
resist. Resist because it's going to be more powerful for us. This is a time to listen to our inner voice and stand apart from the chaos of the world, not be pulled into it. On the 14th of January, we talked about this earlier, this is when Mercury goes into retrograde. But again, when Mercury is in Aquarius, Mercury is very happy in Aquarius up till the 25th. And Mercury is in retrograde up until the 3rd of February. So just be mindful of this. Okay, let's talk about the cards here. We have the devil. We have being chained. We have being held back. These are addictions. These are fears. This is the sense of almost like the opposite of the lovers, right? So the lovers is the expression of the heart, the finding joy and passion and love within our lives. And the devil is saying, what is holding you back? What are the dreams that we have that we say, oh no, that can never be? What is holding us back from really embracing, really moving forward the way that we want, really going in the direction that we, we have been longing for? And this is going to be a time where we start to see habits within ourselves, where we start to see, you know, things that are, are happening around us that are keeping us held back, either through our own making or because we're just attracted to that sort of energy. We grew up in that sort of environment or, you know, we thought, OK, this is the type of person that I'm attracted to. And their energy vibration is just not one that helps us to move forward. It's just not one that builds us up. We can also find wound partners within work, work that makes us feel inadequate, makes us feel overwhelmed. So just being mindful of this, being aware of this is going to be the game changer because we're looking at the chains that bind us. We're looking at societal expectations. We're looking at our own expectations. We're looking at family and friends expectations for us. And we're saying, where do I stand? You know, what do I want? And why am I trying to do the same thing? And, you know, driving myself crazy because it's not right for me. This is a time where we need to embrace what is right for us. Even if it sounds crazy, even if it sounds absurd, this is a time where we stop thinking in the box and we start to say, well, what if, what if I move forward this way? What if I, you know, try this or do this or, you know, have this hobby on the side that I do after work? Because sometimes work is just about paying the bills. It is about paying the bills. It's about upholding our responsibilities. And there's something very noble to that. You know, our world says, you know, if it's not your passion, if it's not your bliss, if it's not your joy, then you shouldn't be doing it. But you, ha there, there are just things that we have to do. Even if we follow our joy, even if we try to follow our bliss, there are going to be times where we think, wow, this is too much or this isn't what I expected it to be. And this is a time where we look at the devil energy within us. We look at the energy that keeps us chained down and we say, okay, I'm sifting through what are my chains and what are my responsibilities. I'm looking at what I need. I'm looking at what is expected of me. I'm looking at what I want from me, you know, how I want to move forward, whether I want to be like my parents or not like my parents, whether I want to, you know, have a life like XYZ or a life like, you know, LMNOP. It doesn't really matter. I get to start seeing it for me. And that brings us to the sun. It's like once we start to see the things in our lives that are holding us down, once we start to see the chaos that is around us, it brings us to a joy. It brings us to the happiest card in the whole entire tarot deck. It brings us to passion and prosperity and insight and ideas. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't realize that there was so much darkness. It's almost like we're stepping out of a gray. We're stepping out of a manasm. I my my asthma. There we go. We're stepping out of a sense of this can't be. And we're stepping into 2022, you know, this year of this angel number year of new beginnings, of new understandings. And this is what we're really embracing here. It's almost like there's going to be the shift. And it doesn't mean that it has to happen, you know, in anything else than ourselves. Once it starts happening within us, once we start saying what we really want, what we really need, we could be looking at things and saying, all right, what makes me happy? What doesn't make me happy? I'm, I'm seeing me. And it's almost like for the first time in a really long time. And then that brings us to a place where we start to honor within our inner selves, the four of swords. And the four of swords is this energy of, I am honoring the journey that I have been through. I'm honoring all the, you know, malarkey that I have put up with, all the chaos, all the hurts, all the pains, all the disappointments. And we tend to think, you know, it should have been smooth sailing, right? I should have had everything figured out. I should be at this point, at this age. And, you know, whatever else we're going to pile on ourselves, that's going to keep us connected with the devil. That's going to keep us in a place of lower energy vibration. That's going to have us looking at ourselves in a negative light, in a saddened light, in an overwhelmed light. And what the Four of Swords is telling us is that in any good story, you have to have conflict, right? We have this in the books that we get pulled into. We have this in the movies that we get pulled into. There needs to be conflict. There needs to be 
triumph over disaster and, and disaster to keep us interested. And that's the same for our lives. Our lives have these elements of pain and suffering and disaster and hurt and despair because it gets to be the rich story of our existence. And if we were reading somebody else's story and we looked at this and we saw this, we'd be like, wow, that's so intense or that's so triumphant that you, you've come through so much. When it's us, we think I shouldn't even have been in that situation to begin with. And that's fine. That's fine to think that way. But it's also really good to understand that I was in that situation. There's nothing I could do to stop it. And I get to honor who I am as I've come out the other end. We could have gone through financial difficulties. We could have gone through bad relationships. We could have gone through a myriad of things that it's like, you know, it's like a list almost. And we think, wow, you know, I came out of that darkness. I need to be proud of me. I need to see me as a person of honor, a person of distinction, a person of power, a person of intensity, of soul and spirit and self. Because once I start honoring who I am, once I start respecting who I am, the things start to change. And that's why we need to rest. That's why we need to come together in ourselves and see ourselves and honor ourselves. And that leads us to the Eight of Cups. We're walking away from something. It's like, my goodness, okay, I thought it would work. I thought I would like it. You know, I thought this is where I wanted to be, but it's not. And it's also all the cups are standing up, right? None of them are toppled over. It's looking at something and saying, yes, it still stands, but does it still stand for me? Is it still right for me? Do I still want this? Do I still need this? Do I still honor this as I move forward? And it brings us to the lovers because now we're looking at our hearts. And Leo, this is something that's very hard for us because we like to be in the now. It's like, if I have an opponent that I can fight, that's great. You know, if I have a, you know, designated, you know, evil kind of thing, it's kind of like, what is it? It's kind of like watching, oh, or the movie Die Hard. There we go. It's like the bad guys, the good guys. It's very distinct, right? It's an 80s movie. They're, they're very distinct. And yet life isn't like that. And we'd like to have that sense of this is right, this is wrong. And we can be a little bit too black and white, you know, white page, black print. This is what's going on. And that's, that's where the energy of justice comes in. That's where that duality of justice comes. And it's like, everything can't be black and white. Everything can't be white page, black print. You know, this is what it has to be. This is what it needs to be. There needs to be an expression. There's going to be a whole lot of gray that comes forward. Not that gray fog of our existence, but it's that, that gray that it's not always going to be clear which road to walk. It's not always going to be clear what's right or what's wrong. And that's where we need to really embrace the, the lovers, the sense of my heart, my soul, my expression, and myself. That's where we need to say, do I love this? Not do I lust this? Because that's going to be something bright and shiny that we can get caught up in. But is this blessed for me? Is this moving me forward in love and in passion and in beauty for my life? How am I setting myself up to get to where I need to be, to embrace what it is that I desire, to look at things through the eyes of my heart, through the expression of my soul, through the passion and the power of myself. And that's where we have the Nine of Cups coming in. And I love that we have the Nine of Cups in our heart and also in the public arena. So there's a wish coming forward. Now, Leo, we might not be aware of this at all, but there's a wish coming forward that brings us to passion, that brings us to a place of blessings and understanding. And it's like, this is what I've been working for. This is what I want. This is what I need. This is who I am. Now, as we're coming to this realization, it's going to be way easier for people in the outside world to see this and then for us to see it ourselves. But what we're going to find is that if I stand in the power of my heart, if I start to calm down the world around me and embrace my passion, my love, my soul, myself, things change. Things change because I'm connecting with me. I'm seeing me. And even if there's a point in our lives where we say, I don't want this, it's just even naming it. I don't want the struggle and the hurt and the pain that I'm going through. I don't want the, the chaos that has, been come, has become a part of my life. I don't want the anger anymore. And we start to actively move to embracing one beautiful thing a day, to embracing one sense of joy, one sense of accomplishment every single day to change our world, to shift our existence, that becomes something that leads us out of the darkness because also at our heart, even though we have our wish and we're falling in love with life again, we have our passion coming forward. We have the five of pentacles and the five of pentacles is the vampiric energy card. It is, well, not the vampiric energy card. It is the poverty energy card. It is a sense of this is what I'm used to. I'm used to this, this struggle. I'm used to this hurt. I'm used to this chaos. I'm used to this pain. And it gets perpetuated until we sit there and we stop. We put on the brakes and we say, no more, no more. 
I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not putting up with this anymore. This is nonsense. And this doesn't get to designate my whole entire life, be my whole entire existence. We're not turning away from the institution that can bring us warmth. Warmth, And that's even just the sense of I'm worth more so often. And I know I did this myself. So often we undersell ourselves because of traumas and dramas that we've been through in the past. It's like, I can't do this because I can't have this because. And so we get to a certain point And then because in our psyche, in our inner self, we think, I just can't have this. I was told when I was little, I wasn't worthy. I was told that I'd never be good enough. I was told that I wasn't, you know, what was needed of me. Now I'm going to start believing that. Now I'm going to start listening to that. And it's just going to rip us apart. And not even now I'm going to start listening to this. I listened to this my whole entire life. I listened to what my parents told me as I was growing. I listened to what my teachers told me as I was developing, what friends and lovers and, you know, everything just came and dumped on me. And because we were small and growing and, and gaining an understanding and finding ourselves and learning what we weren't before learning what we were. It, it hurts us, it scars us, it overwhelms us. And the five of, of pentacles comes in. And it's like, okay, this is where I've closed the door. And we don't need to be walking out in the cold anymore. Taking away our blessings. Now it's time to say, I'm letting them in. And I'm also embracing my heart, my passion, myself to call these blessings into my life, to call me forward. And it leads us to the three of wands where we really start to see the world opening. In the public arena, ships are coming in. Are we going to be connected enough to see it? Are we going to be not so much in our own heads to be able to say, oh, why not try this? Or why not do something new? Why not look at what excites us, what you know, kind of gets our, our blood moving and say, why not try this? You know, Why not have a bit of adventures in my life? Why not open up this door? And what happens here with the three of wands is that we call that passion, that power, that abundance into our lives. We start looking out at the world and saying there's so much more here than I ever realized. And as we do this, again, wishes come forward. But we kind of have to be brave enough to say, I get to have these wishes. I get to not pigeonhole myself. You know, I have to not listen to what the rest of the world says. I have to look at what I need and what I want and what I desire for me. It's being brave enough to dream. And as we're doing this, the subconscious energy to be mindful of is the princess of wands, is ourselves not being developed enough, not being, you know, kind of in our own passion, in our own power to move forward in success. It's also a sense of thinking things should happen faster. Some things take a very long time. And as they take that time, we learn and we grow and we gain an understanding. And that's what we're going to be doing during this time. We're also going to be very attracted to people who are a bit of a hothead. I mean, we're really going to like that. We're going to like being a bit of a hothead ourselves, that, that rush of power, that rush of self-righteousness -righteous, that comes in. We're going to think, oh, wow, that's really great. And we have to, you know, kind of center that out, you know, separate it and say, no, no, I'm not going to be reactionary. I'm going to look at things through maturity, through grounding, through greater understanding and say, how do I get to where I need to be? And is this important? It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy. And that is the inner child, the heart chakra. The heart chakra comes forward and the heart chakra says to us, connect, connect with who you once were, connect with your heart. I love the exercise when the heart chakra comes forward of saying, visualize the child that you were and hold your arms open to that child and let that child run in and just hold on to the adult that you are and tell that child, tell you when you were little, when you were ignored, when you felt all alone, tell you, I love you. I see you. I will care for you always. I will always love you. I will always care for you. I will always be there for you. You are safe. You are secure and you are seen. And every time, you know, the card comes up, I do that imagery in my head. When, when I'm saying it to all of you, and it's just a piece that comes over me. And I hope there is a piece that comes over you as well, because that's important. We tend to think, just trudge ahead, you know, just keep going. You're an adult, brush it off. And we don't honor our story. We are simply stories. It's the stories of our memories. It's the stories of, you know, how we're moving forward. We are simply stories and we need to honor that story within us. It moves us to our subconscious rooted self. And that's the fool. 
it's time to take an adventure. You know, it's time to go on an adventure, take a, take a chance on ourselves, to follow the sun, to follow our passions, to know that we will fall and we will fail. Yes, that's part of life. But what's also part of life is getting up and not letting the world break us, not letting the world decide what we can be and what we can't be. We're not letting anybody else write our story for us. It moves us to our subconscious in ourself. And it is the four of cups. And the Four of Cups is a blessing that's coming in. And it might not feel like a blessing at all. It might not feel like something that we're really happy about. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is one more thing that is put on my plate. This is one more thing that I have no control over that's changing my life, that's pushing me in one direction or another. And I'm not sure I want to be there. The thing is, is that this gift, this gift changes us to the core. And it is going to be a gift. But it's a gift kind of created by divinity, right? And the cup isn't made of gold. It isn't, you know, studded with diamonds or any precious jewels. What it is, it is a gift made by hand. And you can see the handprints in it. You can see the crudeness of it. But there's something special here. It's kind of like if you knew whose hands made it, you would see that, that cup as a thing of honor, as a thing of prosperity, as a thing of abundance. And so when this gift is coming in and it's forcing us to change the way that we look at things, it's forcing us in a different direction, that's going to be powerful. And that is powerful. The repeat of number four also says inwardly, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to take care of our soul and our body. We need to take care of us. And we're going to have a tendency not to want to do that. to get so busy with everything us else that we're going to be the last thing to, to be mindful of. And then it moves us to our subconscious emotional self. And this is the six of swords. This is gathering up all our knowledge, all our understanding and moving forward. This is saying, I don't have a clear vision always of where I'm headed, but I do know that I need to embrace this emotionally and personally. I do know I need to open up this door and head forward towards so much more. And it's like subconsciously, we're starting to really take a risk on ourselves. And that's really good. It moves us to our subconscious public arena self. And that is the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is worried out in fear. You know, the Nine of Swords is looking at things. And the repeat of the Nine is a human number, right? It represents man. But it also is a number that is close to transformation. So we as a human being are close to transformation. And the Nine of Swords is just worry. It's worry, doubt, fear. It's staying up late at night, you know, being overly kind of wrought about things, not knowing how to move forward, not knowing where it is that we're going to be and thinking, I have to know, I have to figure it all out. And what spirit is saying here is that we don't have to have it figured out at all. What we have to do is breathe, take care of ourselves and, and not put so much guilt, shame and anger on our shoulders because that's going to be the thing that tries to destroy us. And that's what we're breaking the chains off. All right. I like that. Repeat of the number six in our emotional self, okay, is is a caring, nurturing number. And there's profound caring, there's profound nurturing here. We have the number nine three times. So divinity is showing us that change is on the horizon and is telling us to connect with us more. All right. All right, Leo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
forward in peace and in harmony, Leo. Leo.